Next, I'm off to meet Paul Bradley of PBA Applied Ecology, who in 2000 discovered what is threatening our native white-clawed crayfish. White-clawed crayfish, um, they weren't very widespread in the Yorkshire Dales until uh, 10, 20 years ago. It'd be commonplace, really, for kids to go down to the stream and pick a few out, pick a bucket full out, um, and play with them like kids do. Unfortunately, uh, that's changed dramatically, more dramatically than almost any other species I can think of. And the population has crashed throughout much of the Yorkshire Dales, uh, as it has elsewhere in the country, and with native crayfish throughout Europe, in fact. Their population decline has been due to an invasive species, just like the red squirrels. The main uh, cause of the decline of white fall crayfish has been the introduction of American signal crayfish to this country. Here we go. There's an American single crayfish, with blood red underneath the claws, very distinctive, very aggressive. The rest of them, there we go, there's a range of sizes there, all from this a very small area in this, uh, in this stream. They outcompete them, they're extremely dominant in the river system, um, and they also carry uh, a fungal-like disease called crayfish plague. Uh, now, once crayfish plague enters the river system, it spreads throughout the river system, and very unusually in, in the natural system, it kills every single white clawed crayfish that is infected. It infects them all in the end, and it absolutely wipes out the population, leaving no survivors at all. It's, uh, it's ranked by the IUCN as one of the 100 worst invasive organisms in the world. White-clawed crayfish tend to be associated with species-rich freshwater communities. But in contrast... Where we find American signal crayfish, um, increasingly we find a very denuded fish population. So it's a, it's a real disaster that American signal crayfish have been introduced, not just for our native white-clawed crayfish, but also to traditional uh, salmonid fisheries, classic game fisheries in the north of England and, uh, and elsewhere. This invasion hasn't gone unnoticed or unpublicised, but misguided attempts to remove signal crayfish have only aggravated the problem. In trapping signal crayfish, it's been conclusively shown that it just that just takes out the large ones and enables more of the younger ones to survive and spread. Surprisingly, the main predator of juvenile crayfish are the adults, and so populations have increased even further. But there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Part of the response of the Environment Agency has been to attempt to hold them for long periods and also to breed them with increasing success at one particular site uh, in the Yorkshire Dales. More successful breeding uh, program for white clawed crayfish anywhere. And that is where I went, to meet Neil Handy of the Environment Agency, who set up the breeding facility. Here we are at uh, white clawed crayfish breeding facility uh, at the top of the Yorkshire Dales in Ribblesdale. It consists of seven tanks, which are in two inline systems of three tanks, which fall through each other from a header tank, which is above. The idea of leaving them into two separate areas, if you like, uh, was so that if we did get a problem in one side, then the other side should be fine. So it allowed us biosecurity on site from, in two different lines. And Neil has kindly agreed to show me some juvenile white clawed crayfish whilst going through the breeding facility setup. So if you're looking here, I think there's a three. They're actually uh, flu protection cages for these. And what I've got these set up for is for the juveniles 
to go into. The juveniles are hiding from the adults until Neil moves them into a separate tank. The only downside is they aren't the easiest things to dismantle and the juveniles are not the easiest to spot. It's amazing how Neil has been able to so successfully breed such fragile little creatures. Through limited management of, of this system, i.e. The, the food availability and the amount of weed growth and the habitat that was put in the tanks, uh, I found it possible then to rear 96 of those animals through to the following May. So the survival rate over the first year was tremendous. We are in a position now that we've got the knowledge, the know-how and the ability to be able to breed them in you know, significant numbers to do that when the time is right. The breeding facility at Upper Ribblesdale has seen three generations of white-clawed crayfish and is regarded as one of the most successful breeding programmes in the UK. We have bred them on site now for over five years and we've got subsequent generations that are now coming through to breed. But all this work was not just to rear individuals in captivity, but to reintroduce crayfish to identified arc sites. In 2000, when crayfish plague was identified, this was a holding site to try and hold crayfish uh, whilst plague burnt out, because uh, of the, what we knew about plague at the time was that if it didn't have a host, then the plague would burn out, given it didn't have a ready source of other crayfish, so it, it would wipe them out. But once it had gone, it had gone, and then the idea was to be able to put the crayfish back in. We've not been able to put them back out into the wild because we still have an underlying problem, and that underlying problem is the, the fact that crayfish plague is still out there. You know, it's it, it, in, in our rivers, or in our local river in particular, in Upper Ribblesdale, we've still identified that crayfish plague is it's still there from the original outbreak in 2000. So I asked Neil, what is being done to tackle the spread of crayfish plague? We have uh, built some, for want of a better word, temporary weirs, which we hope to try and hold back the natural migration of white claw crayfish downstream over some waterfalls, which is where the plague is. The plague's at the bottom, the crayfish at the top are clearer plague, and we've hoped to try and stop those animals drop downstream to allow the plague to burn out naturally. And that will be revisited this spring, which will be, or this summer, should I say, to see if that's been successful. Even with these efforts, the broader picture for white clawed crayfish doesn't look good. Europe wide crayfish are in decline, and here around our area, we've probably got one of the last strongholds, if you like. We've got some of the, the best numbers of white clawed crayfish in, in Britain and throughout Europe, so it's a very important area to try and protect. It's quite important that we try and keep them alive and try and do as much as we can for them. Try and, try and keep them surviving because they've been here since the last ice age, so they, sh they should be here, shouldn't they? Yes, they should. And with the dedication of people like Neil and Paul, they will be for a long time to come. I've met some amazing people working to protect a wonderful place, though I can't help but think I have barely scratched the surface. Thank you.